So greetings friends, it's me Sebastian. So, how are you guys doing? Me? I'm doing just fine. I mean, I can't feel my face or legs, which is either a sign of good things to come, or what that guy just gave me wasn't an aspirin. So, today's video topic kind of came to me when I realized that now that I have Hunter's Path, do I really need a Emo's bow? Because, well, there's a bit of a thing in my bob. So I thought that this might be an interesting video to make and you know I had some spare time, so I thought, huh, why not, let's do it. So in today's video I'll be doing a somewhat of a comparison between the Amos bow and Hunter's Path and in which situation which is better and whatnot. But before we start, I must ask, does someone in the audience have a C6 gun? Come on, you can be honest, this is a- No, Jeff, put your hand down, we know you're a filthy liar. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, that's what I thought. So, because I believe most of the player base has a C1 or C0 gun, you, I've decided to rough my evaluation around that area. Not that that really affects the overall outcome of the video, now that I think about it. <laughs> but, oh well, I'll still be focusing mostly on the lower constellation gun. Also wanna say, if we're talking about looks, Amos bow wins, there's no competition here. Green on blue doesn't really match in my eyes. However, I do think Hunter's Path is the more beautiful one as an individual, not just on Ganyu. However, that's my personal opinion and it has nothing to do with the over overall level. Ah, oh, I bit my tongue, guys. I bit my tongue. On a more positive note, I can feel my face now, which is either a sign of bad things to come, or what that guy just gave me was an aspirin. I don't know which one is worse. So looks have nothing to do with this evaluation. I also wanna say I had like real math prepared for you guys, like I'm not kidding, I had like all those fancy graphs and shit what those real YouTubers have and whatnot. I even opened up Excel like it first time in like five years or so. And of course, for some reason, it didn't save. Yeah. <laughs> now I suppose I had a choice to make of either not sleeping at all and having the graphs and whatnot be done barely in the video because I'd have to start from scratch. Or, you know, I could look at some loot gun you art. Anyway, I struggled with this choice, guys. Like, tens of seconds did I struggle to make this choice. Anyway, there's no math on this episode. You can do the math on why. But first of all, we gotta see what these bows are about. Quick comparison between the two bows shows that the Amos bow has a higher base attack and gives an attack percent substat, whereas the Hunter's Path gives you a crit rate substat, and oh boy, is that a massive crit rate bonus. It should not come as a surprise to anyone to know that higher base attack is better. Yay me. However, I do have to say that crit rate is such a huge stat difference between an attack percent and crit rate. For starters, let me start this by saying, crit rate is the most important stat in like 99% situation anyway, and it does apply to Ganyu as well. Having 44 crit rate and having the base 5, you basically jump to 50 crit rate just with this bow. And if you're like me and suffer to basically get any artifacts with crit rate at all, because you know I was cursed by a sea witch over a family dispute over an heirloom. Totally worth it, by the way. That sandwich was mine by right. Like, did you know that getting attack percent on your artifacts is about twice as more likely than getting crit rate? So the next time you get a bunch of attack percent artifacts, don't worry! It's not that you're unlucky, it's that the game was designed to screw you over from the beginning! I'm still cursed, though. Damn that gypsy curse. But it was their fault, really, for buying a cursed sea witch sandwich. Like, come on. Getting at that top off here, but basically what I'm trying to say is that I value crit rate way above attack percent. However, I do have to say that if you are a god at gathering perfect artifacts, like you have a 80 crit rate and like 200 crit damage, and then you just just buy your artifacts, then yeah, sure, I will admit that Amos bow definitely has the advantage there. But if you're a bleb like me that was cursed by a voodoo doctor because you know you accidentally gave him some cursed gypsy gold, not my fault to be honest. But hey, here we are. Basically, the point I'm trying to say is that I can see the advantage of both these substats and base attack being higher than the lower one. However, what the real kicker is, of course, the passive ability, because these two bows are the only charged attack bows that are, well, 5-star in the game. Onto the passive abilities, the Amos bow does give you 12% damage bonus to your norma normal attacks and your charged attacks. And Hunter's Path gives you 12% damage bonus to all of your elemental damage. And as Ganyu's main damage source is cryo damage, the Hunter's Path has a slight advantage on this because Ganyu's elemental burst and elemental skill still get the passive ability of 12% damage bonus, whereas Amos bow doesn't give you this because it's not a you know, charged attack in this sense. 
However, the next part is to where the real kicker comes in, because after a normal or charge attack is fired, the damage dealt is increased by a further 8% every 0.1 second the arrow is in the air for up to 5 times. This meaning that the Amos Bow can't give you a 40% damage bonus on a shot, like god damn that's a lot of damage. Not that Hunter's Path is lacking much behind, because obtain the tireless hunt effect after hitting an opponent with a charge attack. This effect increases charge attack damage by 160% of elemental mastery. This effect will be removed after 12 charge attacks or 10 seconds. Only one instance of tireless hunt can be gained every 12 seconds. Now, I'm not doubting your abilities, but unless you're a real god, and if you are, please, I could use some help sometimes, I'm not gonna say that you can't do it, but the probability of you doing all 12 shots in that time period is so low that it is somewhere between 0 and 1. You will most likely get the buff for like 3 to 4 shots after the initial one, and after all is d said and done, you can finally look at that massive number as you realize that they died from the first shot. Mm, it happens. Now, Amos Bow actually does have the advantage because it doesn't care about the first shot being a dud, meaning that basically both shots, like first one and the second one, will get the same buff, whereas with the Hunter's Path, the first shot is a kind of a, a dot, but the second one gets the buff and every other shot afterwards. However, Amos Bow also has its own problems, because unless you're fighting Anakin and you have the high ground, you have this problem of that opponents come closer to you and, you know, it's pretty hard to optimize the buff sometimes, you know, because not every shot is the exact distance for the optimized damage. Hunter's Path, on the other hand, doesn't have this disadvantage. You can be as close as you want or fi far away as you want and you'll still gain the buff of the Elemental Mastery nonetheless. With this bow, no Hillerchill's personal space is safe. However, there is a bit of a build around question here because you do need Elemental Mastery to get more of the charge attack damage. Which brings us to the next part of the conversation. Because as we have determined, both bows have their advantage, now it just becomes a part of what kind of Ganyu are you playing. There are basically two types of Ganyu players, there are Melt Ganyus and Freeze Ganyus. And yes, I, I'm sorry physical Ganyu players hate, trust me, if someone, it's me who can understand the joy of playing a physical character and really out of place builds out there, However, I have found that physical Ganyu is such a niche that it doesn't come into conversation here, not to mention that neither Amos Bow or Hunter's Path really help out with physical Ganyu anyway, because you just use normal attacks. There's no charge attack bonus there, so I'm just gonna ignore that for this video. Now let's start off with Melt Ganyu. The first character in your team needs to be, you guessed it, Ganyu. I mean, yeah, it's a Ganyu team, you kind of need Ganyu, unless you're playing that really out-of-the-box Ganyu team with Ayaka as the main DPS. Gotta say, though, that really changes the calculations here. The next character is either Kazuha or Sucrose, depending on which you have and which one you prefer to use. Kazuha actually does help out if you have a Constellation 2 Kazuha and Sucrose helps out because they both help out with Elemental Mastery, which helps Hunter's Path, you know, damage optimization even further. Whereas Amos Bow doesn't really get that much out of the Elemental Mastery buffs. Now, because this is Melt Ganyu, we really need that Pyro character out there to deal constant Pyro damage. Our first option, of course, is Chongling, because, well, she deals a lot of Pyro damage. However, if you're not a fan of Chongling and you need another Pyro character, we can always use... Uh... Well, maybe I just ha don't have that character. Let's... Oh, shit. I... Well, okay then. I guess we'll go with Chongling then. Now, for this particular team, the fourth member can actually switch between whatever your goal is. First, of course, we have Shenhei. Now, I personally don't recommend Shenhei because, well, here's a perfect example of how much damage you can do with a Shenhei. Oh yeah, I died before I could get that real money shot in there. So the problem with having Shenhei on the team is there's no healer or no shield character in there here, so you can guess that if we take damage, well, we just kind of die. The next character is Bennett. Now, honestly, I personally prefer having Bennett in this slot. Mostly because Bennett also gives this Pyro Resonance with Chang and giving us 25% more attack. However, also getting that healing buff is really, really key of not dying just randomly. And in some very, very niche cases, Bennett can theoretically give you Pyro, you know, proc there for that one loose charge shot. So, hey, I guess there's an advantage there as well. Now the last option of course is Chongli or Diona. You can use one or the other, basically it's just the point is that you have a healer or a shield character to do. Shield really helps out with Ganyu because charge attacks really easily can get interrupted, which pretty much just wastes your time out there. So being a C6, Diona actually does help out with Hunter's Path a tad more because it does actually increase your elemental mastery as long as your HP is above 50%. Not to mention if you have a bow like Elechi for the end, which again helps out with elemental mastery as well. It honestly, Chongli's bigger advantage is the fact that his shield is eternal, but both of these characters are perfectly reasonable for the fourth character. Me though, I'll still go with Bennett just for the elemental resonance and the healing and the bigger buff. So for this particular team, the Hunter's Path has way more advantages on top of just relying on the elemental reactions. 
However, there's also the fact that Gun use best in artifacts slot is the Wanderer set, which gives out Elemental Mastery as a two-piece, which again helps out even further more Hunter's Path, on top of having, you know, that 35% charge attack damage. But now it's time to let it go, and now let's talk about Frozen. Or Elsa, we're gonna be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> that joke doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Have I mentioned it's like 3 a.m.? <laughs> Why am I like this? Anyway, let's talk about freeze teams before I freeze up completely. No, no that made it worse. Oh, shit. Like any freeze team you want to start off with, that's right, Ayaka. But unfortunately, we're building Ganyu here, so again, let's put Ganyu as the first character, just in case. The second character is again Kazuo Sucrose, yada yada, element versus the shred, you get the point. Now for the third character, because this is a freeze team, we most likely want to have at least one hydro character. They're the, you know, optimized buff we get from the artifact set. That is usually run on Gunny, which is the frost whatever artifact set. But looking for this support character is going to be super easy out of all these two four star hydro characters. Like, what? Fun fact, did you know that Electro has seven if we count Lisa? What kind of balance is this? Thanos ought to be working on this one. To be honest, there are only two good options. There's Mona and Kokomi. Kokomi being the better one, but, you know, being limited time, though there's a bit of a problem with that one. The other ones that are more free to play, someone might say that it's Xingxu, but Xingxu can only use his swords with normal attacks at, so with charge attack, there's a bit of a problem, as you might think. The really, really sad copium budget one, of course, is Barbara which you have to get real up close and personal, so there you have it. Now that you've gotten over the fact that you have neither Mona or Kokomi and begrudgingly put Porpora in your team out of sadness, the fourth member of the team is tad tricky, because theoretically we could use Bennett. However, there's always a chance that Bennett ruins the reaction. The chance of that happening is, let me tell you, very, very small. Probably doesn't even happen. And unless you're running Mona, Shenhei becomes extremely better, because now we actually have a healer that can, you know, make up for the fact that we have no shield character. Yeah, Barbara, keep on healing. Uh, this is getting sad. And ironically, in this build-up, Chongli actually loses some of its value, because Chongli's elemental skill actually can break Frozen with Shatter, which is a massive tilt. Well, not actually, it's actually fairly just a stat inconvenient, to be honest. But again, if you have the option of running Diona, again, the shield is not as great, but again, I think that there's some advantage, because we also get the Cryo Resonance out of this, which again helps out with crit rate, which again helps out. But the real heart of this team is the artifact set, the Frost, Bite, whatever, I can't remember at this point, and I'm too busy to look it up. Actually, I'm not too busy, I just don't care. This artifact set gives us 15% cryo damage on our Ganyu, which is whoop woo, that is exactly what we want. And on top of this, as long as the character is affected by cryo, we get 20% crit rate, and if it's frozen, we get 40% crit rate. So one can imagine one might not need that crit rate from the Hunter's Path there, so Amos Bow becomes way better with this team buildup. And also considering the fact that the elemental reactions with this team like, oh boy, that frozen damage of, well, zero damage. It would be pretty hard to play Hunter's Path with this artifact set. Unless, and now hear me out, there is actually a pretty fun build with this set. Now let's say that in each of our artifacts, there's zero crit rate that we are going 100% crit damage. Like we do not care that our artifacts have a single point in crit rate. Because get this, just with the passive ability from Frozen we get 40% crit rate. And since Ganyu starts basically with 50 crit rate, we have 90 crit rate without a single point in our artifacts. Imagine having a 90 crit rate on basically every shot and just getting to focus on crit damage and having like 300 crit damage because you can just focus on crit damage. Now I will say this build is very interesting. Probably not worth all the hassle, but at least it's funny, I'll let me tell ya. As it is tradition in my videos, I have a small comparison between a freeze gun you and a melt gun you. To be honest though, this showcase, you know, I usually say this showcase proves nothing. This showcase proves less than nothing. I'm more used to playing with melt gun you, so, you know, I... Mm, there's a reason for me being better at that. I also decided to use Chongli just for the consistency. I will say if I had used like a Bennett, the results would have been different, but again, it, this proves nothing. It's just for fun to see how damage things die, shoots, bow, arrows go, things and stuff. There's like a billion things I could say, but why say it when I can write it on a disclaimer? So let's hit it with a disclaimer and then move right onto the showcase. This showcase proves less than nothing. Honestly, the Wanderer set is way better, as it has been found for generations by my clan. The Hunter's Path is way better on the Melt team. The supporting characters had a lot of things that made them hard to compare. I have way more experience playing with the Melt team. You also can't freeze the boss, so that clan dies. Uh, my eyes hurt, my mouth sucks, my hand is shaky, I was cursed by a frog angel, but that wasn't my fault. I didn't know the frog statue was sacred. Therefore, you leave something like that in the middle of the temple holder. Let's see, uh, what else? Uh, I'm also sleep deprived, and my therapist says I'm a problem case. But again, what does she know? Uh, she's not even real. I'm also pretty sure this apartment is haunted. But wait, it is? I mean, I am? In fact, there's a ghost behind me, right? Oh, shit! Oh, sorry. 
禁止So the ultimate conclusion is following, if you're playing Melt Ganyu, Hunter's Path, mwah, very very good. If you're playing Fro Vs Ganyu, both have their advantages, but Amos Bow ultimately is the easier one to, you know, hoop around with. Amos Bow just kind of is this overall good, it's not like a perfect for like the Melt Ganyu team, it's Hunter's Path is really like, really perfect for that one. Amos Bow's just overall good, like if you're running a loose set of like, the two-piece frozen two-piece gladiator and not any kind of real reactions then yeah sure Amos bow works just fine but ultimately let's say that you have hunter's path and you want to play freeze gun there is nothing wrong and in fact i i urge you to try that crit rate crit damage build it's it's hilarious if nothing else like holy shoot that sounds super fun and hey if you have an amos bow and you want to play you know melt gun you trust me you'll still do fine but i still wanted to point out that the hunter's path does have its advantages it also has the disadvantage that since it looks like a flower, I'm worried that my Ganyu just might eat it any day now. Amos Bow also just kind of happens to be from the standard banner, so theoretically you could obtain more of it just by, you know, wishing on the standard banner and therefore refining it to be better than a Hunter's Path. Then again, I've been saying that since the beginning and I've gotten three Wolf's Gravestone and not a single Amos Bow, so... Ah, <sighs> come on. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. It's like 5 a.m. I have no idea what I've said or done in this video. I hope it was entertaining. Uh, wait, was this supposed to be an educational one? I honestly have no idea. Hope it has been something to someone. Well, I, I gotta go to sleep now. But then again, I could also look at some loot Genshin art. Ooh, choices, choices. No, no. I know what the right choice is. I'll look at Yule art tonight. I'll look on you again tomorrow.